Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. My name is Mike Bailey. It's a pleasure to be able to welcome you to St. Mary's Cathedral for this celebration of the great feast of St. Patrick. We are delighted today to be able to welcome so many of our school children to the celebration. And I begin, of course, with the acknowledgement of the forebears, the original owners of this land, their descendants, and those of the future. We will have an official welcome to country shortly from Mr. John Allen. You are all very welcome today, but especially, of course, those who are our very special guests on this occasion. We are delighted to be able to welcome back once again the Governor of New South Wales, Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, ACQC. Also with us today is Owen Feeney, the Irish Consul General, Adrian Hickey, the Vice Consul General for Ireland, and politicians, Mr. Hugh McDermott, MP, State Labour Member for Prospect, Mr. Michael Daly, MP, State Labour Member for Maroubra, Mr. Guy Zangari, MP, State Labour Member for Fairfield, Mr. Mark Coure, MP, the New South Wales State Liberal Member for the seat of Oatley, Nathaniel Smith, MP, New South Wales State Liberal Member for Wallandilly, and Mr. Justice Justin Clancy, rather, MP, the New South Wales State Liberal Member for Albury. We are also very happy to welcome so many religious among our numbers, including Sister Marie Marsh, CSB, Sister Eileen Cray, CSB, and Sister Claire Keady, CSB, representing the Brigidine Sisters. We also can welcome Brother Paul O'Keefe, FSP, the province leader for the Patrician Brothers. And from the Sisters of St. Joseph, we welcome Sister Maria Casey, RSJ, Sister Joe Brady, RSJ, and Sister Mary Lay, RSJ. We also have students from their schools, in addition to those from the Marist Order, the Christian Brothers, the Sisters of Good Samaritan, the Sisters of Mercy, and the Poor Clare Sisters. We hope that's covered everyone, because we also know that we have many parish schools represented among the number today, and it's a pleasure to be able to welcome them from the Archdiocese of Sydney, and also from the Diocese of both Parramatta and Broken Bay. I draw your attention now to the official welcome to country. It's to be presented by Mr. John Allen, and I ask you to please make him welcome as he makes his way to the microphone for the official welcome to country on this important day when we celebrate a saint that has, in many ways, without ever coming to Australia, been responsible for bringing alive the faith in this country in terms of those who've carried it on through the years. Mr. John Allen. Good morning, one and all, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Before I do acknowledgement, I'd just like to read this prayer of the Aboriginal people. Father of all, you gave us the dreaming, you have spoken to us through our beliefs. You then made your love clear to us in the person of Jesus. We thank you for your care, you own us, you are our hope. Make us strong as we face the problems of change. We ask you to help the people of Australia to listen to us and respect our culture. Make the knowledge of you grow strong in all people so that you can be a home in us and we can make a home in everyone in this land. Amen. So I call on our Creator Spirit, Waiami, to bless this holy place, the surrounding land and all who are gathered here today. We acknowledge with respect the Gadigal people of the Eora Nations, the traditional custodians of this land. We pay our respects to our elders, past, present and emerging, and also to those elders who may be present here today. We pay with respect. We are thankful for their spiritual connections to Mother Earth and all of God's creation. And for tens of thousands of years, they have passed down their knowledge, their language, and their dreamtime stories. And it is up to us as a nation to maintain this tradition for now and for future generations. 
So we might just pause for a moment to think and remember of our own loved ones, our parents, family, friends, and those in our community who have journeyed with us and shared their knowledge and values, showing us the way to live in peace and harmony and justice. And may these memories be imprinted in our hearts and in our minds as we pass these gifts onto our children and our children's children. We acknowledge with gratitude that we share this land and the sorrow at the cost of that land sharing. Our hope is together in the spirit of reconciliation, we move to a place of justice and partnership as together we walk gently on this land. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John Allen. The principal celebrant for today's Mass will again be Bishop Terry Brady, Most Reverend Terry Brady, who has kept alive the tradition of these Masses over recent years. We welcome him and other priests involved in the celebration of this Mass for St. Patrick. The opening hymn, in just a moment, Hail Glorious St. Patrick. Welcome to you all. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you all. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, this year, 2021, as we gather here in this Mother Church of Australia, here at St. Mary's, Sydney. Welcome to you all this day. Mike's just gone through all that wonderful list. Thank you all for being here. 
we gather this day as brothers and sisters in this time of COVID and uh, very conscious as we do gather of course there's um, many of our sisters and brothers who are often here with us who can't be here with us this year but I know they're certainly with us in spirit we keep them and embrace them this day as well of course remember all our brothers and sisters in Ireland particularly at this point of time they I think they're almost over COVID. They've had such a rough time as so many other parts of our world have had as well. We keep them, <coughs> excuse me, and embrace them all in our love this day as we gather as brothers and sisters, very much in the spirit of Patrick. Patrick was a, a pastor, he loved people, loved his brothers and sisters. And there was two words often on his mind. He used to say, say two words in Latin. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, and Deo gracias, thanks be to God. As he travelled all around Ireland, bringing the good news, embracing people, those words continually came off his lips. And as we gather this day, I pray, like Patrick, we know we've got a very, very merciful and loving God. That's what more than ever we all need to hear. And we're very blessed this day. It's so good seeing so many of our younger people here from our schools. A very special welcome to you all. You're very, very welcome in this place. This is your place, it's our place. You're very, this, is, this is your spiritual home. A big welcome to you all. And I'm so blessed this day of having our, one of our younger priests Father Joseph Murphy, who's our homeless this day, Irish descendant, a wonderful young man, good priest. Thank you very, very much, Father Joe, for being here this day with us. We're, we're very proud of you. Thank you. And to our, all our servers as well, so many, and all those that make this Mass happen, thank you. So we pause now with very much those words of Patrick in our hearts this day. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. And we encounter Jesus face to face as we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant that through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wondrous deeds to all. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Ah, Lord, look, I do, do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, do not say, I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to pro proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. 
He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the labourers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send labourers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they, do, and they do not make you welcome, go out into its streets and say, we wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, on that day it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devils submit to us when we use your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I have given you power to tread underfoot serpents, serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. We all know the story of St. Patrick, a young fellow who traipsed off to Ireland to bring the faith. But why do we venerate him so much? Why do we see him as such a heroic figure? When he was a young man, he was minding his own business when one day he was captured and taken to Ireland and enslaved. He lived years as a slave in Ireland, tending to sheep against his will, until he escaped and made his way back to Ireland. But the remarkable thing that makes St. Patrick so heroic is what happens afterwards. He decided to become a priest. And as they say, he went off to France to undertake his preparation for the priesthood. But then he heard call from God, a call to go back to the very people who enslaved him, to go back to those whom the world would regard as his enemies. And he did. He went back to Ireland on his own not knowing what the future would hold, with the sole purpose of bringing the faith, bringing the light of the gospel to those who had enslaved him and made his life so hard for so many years. What a remarkably heroic, what a remarkably selfless, and God-centered man, St. Patrick was. 
That is why we venerate him so much. That is why we love him so much. But St. Patrick isn't just a distant figure off in the past whom we venerate. No, he is relevant here and now, today. He is relevant because he issues each and every one of us a challenge. How God-centered are we? How loving are we? How self-sacrificial are we? We live in an age where egoism and self-centeredness are glorified. Even something as mundane as the mobile phone in our pocket, the iPhone, has in its name I. And whether or not Apple intends it to be this way, it can lead us into ourselves, make us more self-centered, cut us off from our brothers and sisters, cut us off from God. St. Patrick issues us a challenge. Are you going to be like him? Are you prepared to lay it all down for God, for love of your neighbour, and to embark on the great adventure of love that St. Patrick took? Are you going to rise to the challenge? Amen. Thank you very much, Father Joe, for giving us that challenge. That is a challenge, and Patrick certainly does challenge us. Thank you very, very much. We stand now for our prayers of intercession this St. Patrick's Day. Our young students are going to proclaim the intercessions for us today. Thank you. As we honour St. Patrick, let us imitate his example by opening our hearts to God in prayer. Let us thank God for the ways in which the ministry of St. Patrick and his spiritual descendants have blessed the Universal Church. May the light of faith burn brightly before the men and women of today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church in Ireland, that she may bravely and wisely face the challenges of the day, and that the flame of faith St. Patrick, lit at Tara, may be rekindled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our many immigrants, may the Lord bless and watch over them. May they seek and find God, May they be a blessing to their adopted communities and their places of work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for parents of young children. We ask God that those who have ceased to practice their faith may see that it is a treasure, the pearl of a great price, and that they may rejoice in the task of forming their children in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all faithful departed, especially the deceased missionaries, may they rest from their labours and enter the joy of their master. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the faith brought to us by St. Patrick. We ask for the grace of perseverance as we make these prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
So my friends, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Rejoicing in the gift of faith, O Lord, we bring you these offerings, grant that through the prayers and example of St. Patrick, our lives may be united to Christ our Saviour in a holy sacrifice of praise for Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the festival of St. Patrick, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so for company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which he put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognise in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop, the order of bishops all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. get a wonderful opportunity this day to thank our Heavenly Father for giving us his son Jesus but also to appointing wonderful disciples like St. Patrick who brought the love of his son to the world but especially to people of Ireland but far beyond Ireland and so we pray from the depths of our hearts in gratitude our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And in this continuing time of pandemic, this time of COVID, let us offer each other a COVID sign of peace on this feast of St. Patrick. Peace with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Receiving Almighty Father, the body and blood of your Son, we have known a foretaste of the heavenly banquet granted in communion with St. Patrick and all our forebears in faith. We may be true to your commandments on earth and so share eternal joy in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You might like to be seated just for a moment. I won't keep you too long. Just a little word. Every time I come into this cathedral and I'm up here in the sanctuary, I look down and I see remnants of all those people who have been part of my life, part of my faith journey. I look down, I so many of them, and particularly on this day, St. Patrick's Day, all those bishops and priests, religious, and my, the big community, the, the peop, God's people, I look down and see them all there this day. Many, of course, who are, I have no doubt, are looking down upon us from above with great joy this day. And uh, I think more than ever, and I think Father Joe really highlighted that in his homily, uh, we're searching Patrick's men of deep spirituality, deep prayer, great depth, as all those Irish saints, the Bridgets and the, all the other names, we've mentioned so many of them, it's just deep in prayer, deep in spirituality. And that's what I know as I move around this archdiocese. I just see so many of our young people searching for spirituality. I've never seen it so abundantly as I've observed it in the last year or so. Extraordinary. Young men, young women searching. And they've got this beautiful depth. I could see it here today in the young people as well. And um, that prompts me just to mention the name Eileen O'Connor. Eileen O'Connor, I pray, is on the way to sainthood. Eileen, a girl from Waterloo, here down, just down the road. Grew up in Waterloo, went to Our Lady of Mount Carmel School. Irish parents came from a place called Sligo. Eileen was only a very young woman, 25, 26, when she went to the Lord. This is her actually her hundredth year of her death. Of her death, she, she's out the, the the community she was part of, is out there in Coogee. The sister of our lady is uh, a nurses for the poor, often known as the brown nurses, who have continued through their ministry to minister in the, most, the poorest of the poor. Eileen, a lady of deep prayer spirituality, she, she never a sister herself. She just had this tremendous love of God, a tremendous love of the most needy in our community. And uh, I've just been sitting on her words very much this year, just what she said, just the Christmas before she went to the Lord, it, it, she said, the cause of a person's poverty is not yours to question. The fact a person is poor is the reason you help. Had this great, had this tremendous sense, which has seen, I think it permeates the Irish peoples, this great sense of equality, this great sense of we're all sisters and brothers. There's no pecking order. There's no first and second class citizens. You always must look after the most fragile. And I think that's the great contribution that the Irish brought to Australia. I hope and pray that we don't move away from that. So easy as we become comfortable in a, in a place in this land of such deep spirituality for our indigenous brothers and sisters that we can often, we can forget very, very quickly where we come from. I've got to shake myself every day. I have to say, 
My parents never let me forget where I come from. And thanks be to God, many of the good Catholic people who I have the wonderful privilege of ministering and working with don't let me forget either. I'm indebted to that particular those religious out there. So many, I thank you for that. But I too, on that note, thank you all those for you all being here this day. It's so wonderful to see our governor here, Margaret Beasley. Margaret, who was a few years behind me at school at St. Declan's at Penshurst, I won't say how many years ago, but numerous years ago. And um, I think all of us, it was a bit rough and tumble, you know, but the wonderful foundations in that place of faith. My, uh, my mother used to say to me, they gave you the faith. I think the family gave me the faith, but the, I have to say St. Declan's, Penshurst, the school, the sisters and the teachers were extraordinary. Amazing, really. And, uh, and Margaret from that as well, and others also. Many, so I think all of us have shared that in so many different ways as well. And also to our consul, Owen Feeney. Owen, got to know over the last few years, an extraordinary man, good man. We've, had, we've been so blessed with the, our consuls here in this place, one after the other, all been very different or exceptional going out of the way. And I picked that up in the young community, the young Irish, when they're in trouble, in difficulty, the consulates there working with the Irish Welfare Bureau and the Irish government, it's quite extraordinary. It gives me great hope, a society that cares about its people, its young people especially. I think that says so much. Thank you, Owen, for your leadership. Thank you very much. And particularly the small little group each year who works on this mass brings it all together. Thank you all very much indeed. You know who you are. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, as you know, us priests and bishops, without the good help of wonderful lay leadership, we're pretty, we're pretty hopeless, really. And I uh, thank you for all that. And I think this day, I'd particularly like to thank Michael Kelleher, the principal of St. Mary's Cathedral College, who has gone out of his way with his uh, brothers and sisters in education to really encourage our young people being here this day in those schools. Thank you very, very much indeed. It was so wonderful having our young people here with us this day. And the hospitality of this cathedral, here all that goes to make this place tick around. Thank you very much. And it's wonderful having our young choristers here this day as well. Thank you very, very much. And, uh, but to you all, and uh, thank you. And may that spirit of St. Patrick, St. Bridget, and of course all those many, many, many Irish saints, the little place where my father's family come from, the patron is St. Moog. Never heard of St. Moog. I haven't come across any people being called Moog yet, but Moog, the story goes, died in the arms of Bernard of Clairvaux. Hence all the, all the young men that come from there from uh, Bernard's and Brian's and Aidan's and all these names. So quite extraordinary. And uh, but this beautiful day, don't forget to extend a hand, as Eileen says there, keep your eyes open for the most fragile, the, the most... I can assure you, before you leave this site this day or leave this city centre, you'll come across, you'll certainly encounter Jesus in disguise through St. Patrick or St. Patrick in disguise somewhere, I can tell you right now. None of us will, will all have that blessing this day. Thank you very, very much. How about we stand now for our blessing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to my great MC here as well. Thank you very much. Beautiful blessing for this day. And the Lord be with you. And we bow our heads and we pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of God upon you all, men of Aaron, sons and daughters, prince and blessing. Amen. May your blessing, blessing of long life, health blessing, blessing of excellence, eternal blessing, heaven blessing, amen. Cloud blessing, seed blessing, fruit blessing, 
land blessing, crop blessing, dew blessing. Amen. Blessing of happiness be upon you all, laity, clergy, religious, while I commend the blessing of the man of heaven. It is, it is my bequest as it is a personal blessing. Amen. Patrick, son of Cohen, son of Padre, Archbishop and Chief Apostle of Ireland. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass has ended to continuing to serve the poor Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day to you all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you for being part of the Eucharist and a reminder that there will be celebrations in honour of St. Patrick down around the uh, Circular Quay area and the Rocks area of Sydney on Sunday and the Irish National Association on Easter Sunday, the 4th of April, will commemorate the rising. Once more, happy St. Patrick's Day and thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, for the schools attending, can I just ask some instructions for the school attendees to exit through the southern doors? And we're going to have a photo opportunity, two representatives to come and get the school college banner that will remain up at the top of the stairs. And colleagues of mine will arrange for the photo opportunity outside on the main steps for all schools attending. Thank you.